well friends welcome to the course on micro irrigation the title for the today's lecture will be dynamics of water and fertilizer movement in soil under micro irrigation systems i am tbs rajput phd in soil and water conservation engineering more than 40 years of work i have experience at working as scientist at Water Technology Center at Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi. I have published 10 books and over 200 articles and have been awarded by different agencies for my teaching. Indian Council of Agriculture Research gave me the Best Teachers Award and for research, the same Indian Council of Agriculture Research gave me the highest award of Ravi Hamad Kidwai Award. Presently, I'm working as adjunct professor at Indian Agriculture Research Institute, New Delhi, and Professor Jay Shankar Telangana State Agriculture University, Hyderabad. I'm also working as visiting professor at Asian Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Now, coming to the subject, the water movement in soil depends on many parameters particularly in the micro irrigation system we'll discuss. So start with uh, soil constants such as liquid limit, plastic limit and porosity. That shows the soil properties which will affect the movement of water. Mainly porosity will definitely be more pronounced effect. Soil moisture content prior to irrigation if the soil is dry before irrigation, then movement of water will be fast because of high metric potential. And then if the soil is wet before irrigation, then movement of water will get affected accordingly. Hydraulic conductivity. It is the rate of flow of water, the soil, how much it permits. It depends basically on the soil type. Then temperature of soil and water that will affect the movement, rate of infiltration into the soil. Once you apply the water on the soil surface, by whatever way you do, whether surface or sub sub surface, sprinkler or drip, it gets into the soil. It infiltrates into the soil. So the rate or the you say capacity of soil to intake water from the surface, that is the infiltration rate and that affects the movement of water. Then, rate of discharge of ammeter. The point of water application, which is an, uh, normally an ammeter in micro irrigation system, we are considering, then at what rate it is applying water. Smaller the rate, the vertical movement will be faster vertical force, the gravitational force will be pronounced. But if you increase the discharge, the soil cannot let it everything vertically and the lateral forces, that is the capillary forces become predominant. And uh, that's how the, the shape will be decided. We'll discuss it later. Spacing of ammeter is important in one respect that if ammeters are far apart, then each ammeter works as a point source of water application. And the movement of water within will depend only on the discharge of that ammeter and the soil time. But if let us say the ammeters are placed very close to each other, then they are wetting after some time start merging together. And then they are no more a single point of water application. They start serving as a line source of water application. We'll discuss these things in detail later on. Then level of water table. Because the from the water table, it is the sum height through capillary, the upward flux. And then it affects the capillary movement and it affects the, the flow of the water in the surrounding region. Then duration of water application is important. Because if you keep on applying water, then it may create saturation some point of time. 
and then if it is saturation you know the flow will be saturated flow and saturated flow means only uh, it will just fill up all the pores which is not the desirable condition particularly that is never achieved in uh, micro irrigation. In fact, micro irrigation is not meant for achieving saturation. We attempt to reach almost at the field capacity level through micro irrigation because the plants feel more comfortable with the amount of moisture at field capacity because it also has the oxygen and air for, for breathing for the plant's roots. So we make it up to the field capacity and evaporation and root extraction they will also depend they will also affect the uh, movement of soil, water water in the soil now just to understand a simple uh, difference between different methods of water application and and water behavior soil in this particular case what i am saying what we are seeing that if it is a case of surface irrigations and then we fill up the water in the soil, bring it to up to field capacity, and then we just stop and take start using this water. The water starts getting depleted every day, and then it keeps on depleting up to 10th day. And on 10th day, when the moisture becomes so low, which is equal to the minimum a permissible or minimum allowable soil moisture for that particular soil and crop then we again irrigate and when we irrigate again we again bring the soil moisture to field capacity and this is the same cycle follows if you take a sprinkler irrigation then of course we are first irrigation we are filling up to field capacity and then the depletion keeps on takes place but you see on sixth day we are not getting up to ten, waiting up to 10th day but we are irrigating on 6th day and then again irrigating and bringing the soil moisture to field capacity level and the same cycle gets repeated but in case of drip irrigation you are seeing that from the field capacity some water gets lost through evapotranspiration and other uh, activities and whatever the water loss is, we make it up every day. So every day we are seeing the amount of water which is lost from the root zone is filled up and the plant is almost at the field capacity throughout. In case of sprinkler, the moisture content variations are up from the field capacity to what is achieved on the sixth day. And in case of surface irrigation, the variation the plant experiences is from field capacity to minimum allowable moisture level in the soil for the crop. So you can just see in these three different conditions, plant is more comfortable in micro irrigation or drip irrigation system because it always has the soil moisture adequate and also gives the oxygen required by the plant roots and the fluctuation of the soil moisture is less so the plant doesn't feel any stress because if the moisture stress goes low the plant starts feeling stress and if the plant starts feeling stress its economical yield gets affected so this is the basic of the the flow that happens in the, the soil let's come to understand that what happens within the soil then water movement in the soil occurs under both the situation is a saturated as well as unsaturated now saturated flow condition occurs only below the water table and below the water table you can just see there is hardly any movement in vertical direction and predominantly horizontal forces for literal movement of water are more pronounced then in unsaturated flow condition that occurs above the water table so within the zone from water table surface to the 
soil surface. Within this zone, the flow of water is in, in unsaturated condition. And in unsaturated condition, the movement of water is basically under the gradient of metric potential. Metric potential means the force by which the, the soil is holding the, the moisture. And the change in the metric gradient, metric potential gradient, uh, shows the content of soil water along the gradient. That is the movement of that uh, water into, along the gradient. And the flow under drip irrigation, to understand, uh, to begin with, the flow under drip irrigation is unsaturated flow. Let's try to understand saturation, saturated flow a little more. Uh, we'll come to that later. Then, drip system are typically designed to, but as I told earlier, only the soil zone, which is occupied by the plant roots. And the soil moisture is maintained at an optimum level. What is that optimum level? Around field capacity. And a three-dimensional flow takes place when drippers act as point source. Remember I told if the drippers are far apart, then each dripper is wetting its own area, which comes in the shape of a bulb. And then the flow in this particular case is three-dimensional. And when partly it is uh, covering the surface, then it is a two-dimensional flow. But when the drippers are close by, close to each other, and so close that their wetting patterns start merging with each other, then it is a two-dimensional flow of water that takes place. Now, to understand the saturated flow, you all remember Darcy's law? Darcy's law is the head drop per unit distance in the direction of flow. What is that? If the flow is taking place from point A to point B, then what is the head, particularly the metric potential at point A and point B? And what is the difference between these two heads and what is the distance between these two? So the difference between the levels of the heads at two points divided by its distance, that is the gradient hydraulic gradient and then this is the driving force for the flow to take place and Darcy first defined this as the discharge rate of flow rate per unit of area and per unit of time is proportional to this gradient that is delta H divided by L delta h being the difference between the two heads and l being the distance between these two points and then this proportionality uh, was removed into uh, equality and then the by a proportionality constant and that was called as hydraulic gradient k now this equation is known as darcy law or Henry darcy this law indicates that the flow of a liquid through a porous medium is in the direction of and at a rate proportional to the driving force. The negative sign that you are seeing in the equation that Q is equal to minus K into the left indicate that the flow is in the direction of gradient or the direction of flow is towards decreasing head. All right. Now let's come to the unsaturated flow condition. The unsaturated flow, we will be studying three equations defining unsaturated flow. First is Buckingham Darcy equation. Then second is common, you all know the Laplace equation. And third is a very commonly used or unsaturated or transient flow as a Richards equation. Now, in case of Buckingham-Darcy equation, 
it is the slight extension of Darcy's equation and he just took hydraulic conductivity k as a function of two parameters hat and moisture content and then he defined the fluid flux j equals minus k h d double h capital h divided by dz and minus kh dh by dz minus kh now j is the fluid flux h capital h is the total head that is small h plus z and a small h is metric head or potential and small z is gravitational head and k is the hydraulic conductivity of the soil so this is a simple equation now listen to more familiar laplace equation laplace equation you all know is very common uh, relationship del square phi equals zero okay now the same thing here it is non-linear differential equation for unsaturated flow because hydraulic conductivity kh is a function of potential as follows he defined kh as a function del j equals to del dot kh del h and del j equals del k small h dot del h minus k small h del square h and finally you can just see del j equals zero now del is a vector operator that's why you are seeing the dot products there and remember dot products and cross products in the vectors so it is a dot product now v is the vector operator in space so and space is defined in that in three dimensions x y z so del is an operator in x y and z directions the third equation is the most commonly used richards equation is a more generalized form and uh, it is uh, this equation is solved based on different assumptions for different situations and specific solutions are derived but let us first understand the generalized form of the richard equation the insulin saturated under transient flow condition water content and metric head vary with time and buckingham darcy equation must be extended so the first buckingham darcy equation you remember we talked first and for one dimensional vertical flow the continuity equation requires that change in the volumetric water stored within a soil element be equal to the net flux into the element and any source or sink within the element it is described as follows just by adding one more term that is s source or sink term and define del theta by del t is equal to minus del j plus s now here theta is soil moisture content soil moisture t is time j is fluid flux and s is the source or sink term and del is the vector operator if it is a one dimensional flow it is z if it is a two dimensional flow it is x and z and if it is a three dimensional flow it has all the three components x y and z all right okay and uh, what i'm showing you here is not the complete derivation of the equation for that you will have to uh, refer to the lecture notes where the complete derivation is given but what i am showing you here that how a specific solution has been derived by gardner by deriving the equation further and introducing an additional term d that is the diffusivity of soil by defining diffusivity of soil in terms of k theta dh by d theta and remember k is hydraulic gradient as a function of theta soil moisture and this is the head and this is the soil moisture so in this term the, the diffusivity 
of the soil has been defined and this diffusivity uh, by using this diffusivity and several other assumptions uh, the solution that Gardner arrived at is k as a function of h is equal to ks is a saturated hydrogen quantity exponential alpha h alpha is an empirical constant and h is the head now he worked out the values and Zegar part in 84 they worked out the values of alpha and h and you can now refer to the soil type that you are handling and the values of alpha and uh, ks are well given depending on h now you can work out the the conduct hydraulic conductivity here in this picture you are seeing that uh, the difference between drip irrigation flow and uh, flows of under different other methods of water application now if you take any other surface matter of irrigation which is mentioned here other methods you may note that all the excision that the soil contain is getting removed and replaced by the the water that we are applying but in case of drip irrigation that's not happening the water is getting drip by drip and then movement of water is not as in this case but in a elliptical or parabolic motion and this shape keeps on increasing with time and but the soil moisture keeps on decreasing as you go away from the dipa and this shape the bulb the verting bulb is created because of the gravitational force and the capillary force the resultant of that too we'll be discussing them in further details later now here you can just see for yourself water flowing from the dripper is distributed in the soil by gravity and capillary forces often referred to as onion shape this is the wetting front that you are seeing the wetting area this is almost of the shape of an onion and the the exact shape in fact the objective is to match this shape to the the distribution pattern of the roots of the plant but it depends on the emitter discharge rate soil type and of course the duration of irrigation now water distribution within the soil profile the water tickling from a point source such as an emitter enters the soil and move vertically downward because of force of gravity and horizontally under the force of capillary and hydraulic head and things of that kind and forming into a, a cone shaped thing inside the cone the main root zone of the plant develops the size and shape of the cone and affected mainly by the emitter discharge and the type of soil of course with the duration of application as well as we had in the previous slide now to understand the difference between different type of soils the cone that forms or the area that the wetted area that forms in a fine textured soil and heavy soils are different and in in a you can just see in a in a lighter soil you can see in the bigger the the movement of water is more in vertical direction and if you would go to the clay the movement is more in the horizontal direction and the loam is somewhere in between so this will make us understand that what sort of design of the drip system we requires we require under different soil conditions and also these patterns suit which type of crops so both the things can be done consequently 
larger spacing between the emitters are allowed in heavier soil because they are covering more horizontal area. So you can afford to have the larger spacing in heavier soils, but it will be much smaller in a lighter soil. In oil soil, in all soils, deep percolation below the main root zone can occur if emitters are spaced too widely apart. Now, in the interest of wetting the entire rooting pattern, the duration is decided. Duration of irrigation is decided. Now, it is possible that if you operate the system for so long, then some water will move downwards at below the root zone, which is called deep percolation, because that is useless for the plant. The plant cannot use it, so it is considered a, a loss. So depending upon the soil type, we can design our drip system, particularly the spacing of the drippers and the discharge rate of the drippers can be uh, decided on the basis of the type of the soil. In the last uh, figure, we had seen that uh, how different type of soils are having the patterns modified, wetting patterns modified by the type of the soil. Here what we are showing that even in the same type of soil, if the dripper is discharges change, their wetting patterns could be different. Now, you may note that if the dripper is having low discharge, it is likely to spread wider and the, in comparison to a dripper discharge, a high dripper discharge, wherein the vertical movement is likely to be more rather than the horizontal spread. Now, wetting area below a single dripper. Now, the drippers are placed apart and most of the time, the drippers are working as a single or the point source of water application. And the wetting below this will depend on so many parameters like soil type. We have seen heavier soil, wider spacing, wider wetting, lighter soil, vertically more wetting, discharge, low discharge, more horizontal wetting, higher discharge, more vertical wetting, initial soil moisture. Now, if the soil moisture, initial soil moisture is high, then conductivity they will be low and then movement will be slower. But if the initial moisture content is low, the soil is more dry, the gradient is, hydraulic gradient is more, that will move much faster and much wider. Soil compaction. Yes, if you compact the soil or the, the soil is compact, then definitely the, the porosity is less and then it would affect the, the variation and then it would spread more wider than going vertically down. Now to put discharge rate we discussed and application time. Now it depends if you keep on applying the same step for a very, very long time, what will happen? It will not keep on going into the horizontal direction. At one point of time, the capillarity will stop and then the more pronounced will be gravitational flow and it will be most, the water will be, and you will be losing that most of the water. Now here you see the observed soil moisture distribution within the soil under a dripper. The dripper is located here. In this corner, the dripper is located here. Now from here, you can see the soil moisture, this particular zone is high. All these lines that you are seeing are the contours of equal moisture. So this moisture content is highest within this zone and lowest is within the, this further zone. But the roots can go up to this particular point and use all this moisture. Now <coughs> we need to know the rooting pattern to match whether this, you know, in this particular case and in this particular case, you can just see the difference. And this difference is because of what 
be of because of any difference as you remember last time it was it could be a difference of type of soil it could be a different or different discharge it could be different different duration of uh, operation and things of that kind but after observing this we can definitely uh, recommend this this particular system is best suited for this particular crop which has got this rooting pattern now when the emitter the, we have seen the single emitter we are all the talking time all the time talking if the emitters are far apart each emitter is working as a point source of water application and for a given application of water vital volume of soil is estimated as a hemisphere now you know how the hemisphere volume is worked out volume of wet soil that is the hemisphere is 2 pi r cube by 3 so 2 by 3 pi r cube and assuming that soil volume is wetted from the initial volumetric water content to a final water con content then the relationship between the time dependent effective radius of the hemispherical wetted soil volume and the amount of water applied can be estimated and related as RT, this is the effective radius with respect to time 3 Q T, T is again the same time 2 pi theta final, the soil moisture final minus soil moisture earlier and cube root of that. Okay, so just assuming that it is a hemisphere, the volume is taken as well hemisphere and then soil moisture estimation we take what was the initial soil moisture and what is this one moisture final pastoral moisture and the difference theta f minus theta i is the difference that the irrigation has made now t is a time dependent radius of the hemispherical wetted soil volume why it is time dependent because if you see in first few minutes the the wetted surface is very small but it is very small and as the the time keeps on increasing the the area of hemisphere size of the hemisphere keeps changing that means the effective radius also keeps changing and that is what the white is called the effective time radius okay now coming to uh, the Further mathematical relationships of the hemispherical, hemispherical model. Uh, the model appears to work best for, not for all conditions, but for fine textured soils, dry initial conditions, and relatively short times, and becomes invaluable for longer times and for better conditions due to gravity times. Now, what they are saying, they are saying is, if it is a lighter soil. You, the shape of the wetting will be closer to a hemisphere or similar to a hemisphere if in the initial stages but if you keep on irrigating a longer time the shape it deforms because of gravity the shape gets deformed and is no more uh, a hemisphere and it cannot be equated by a hemisphere that's what it says now the shape gets distorted uh, by hemispherical to, from hemispherical to semi ellipsoidal ellipse time at which the effect of gravity on the flow process, process becomes dominant and equals capillarity and begins to distort the hemispherical approximation is related to the soil properties and to the change in water content within the wetted soil volume now at which time the, the shape changes from hemispherical to semi-ellipsoidal depends on soil type and other parameters. We have seen this relationship earlier as well. Here I am trying to show the different type of soils, heavy, medium and light soil. The wetted behavior here are different and in lighter soil is more towards vertical and then you can just see the spread is limiting to 30 to 60 centimeters but if you go to medium the spread could be up to one meter 
but if it is a heavy soils, the wetted spread would be up to 1.25 meters. Now, if that is so, the consequence is that in the design of replication system, the spacing of the drippers can be adjusted accordingly. But now, but when the emitters are intentionally placed close together, such that our, their wetting pattern, wetting zones, start merging together, then it is no more working as a point source. It works, starts working as a line source of water application. And in this particular case, the flow pattern is completely different. Now you can just see here, the a tripper is here and another tripper is located here and they start wetting so the soil moisture keeps on increasing and the water front comes here with time they merge and with further time the you will see the moisture more or less becomes uniform in the entire space between the two. So it's no more identifiable single source, single point source, but it is working as a line source. Now visually it would have this, this similar to of arrangement that if it is a line source then uh, Income, the wetting pattern in comparison to different soils. In a lighter soil, you can just see how a line source wets and how a medium soil it wets. And heavy soil, it will be a much wider but much shallower wetting pattern. And this is important to understand basically in the design and selection of the crop. But when the emitter start acting as line source, then it is a, there is no more a point source of water application, but the line source of water application. And it can be achieved by different type of uh, uh, tapes having very close emitters, or maybe a tube, which is a leaking tube or a soaking tube or whatever uh, that. Now, by having this, it will slowly develop into a strip, wetted strip. And once it is a wetted strip, then we need to estimate what is the wetted area. And uh, in this particular case, we work out, if we do not say the, the width of the wetting, but we say effective radius of uh, saturation. Now, uh, effective radius is nothing but half emitter spacing because if the radius effective radius is less than half the spacing then they are point source of water application they are not merging each other so for merging it is important that this effective radius is more than the half spacing okay now for estimating what is the effective radius the relationship is given here 4 upon alpha square and pi square plus q upon pi k s such and 2 minus 2 upon alpha pi alpha you remember is the empirical constant and for different soils the values uh, were given by gardner and his partner and then pi is known as a constant and Ks is the hydraulic conductivity and Q is the emitter discharge and Rs of course is the ultimate saturated radius. Now, uh, further deriving this relationship, we can come to the, the solution uh, suggested by the work in 1985 
where it says the excess lateral extent of the saturation strip for the continuous drip lens or say ultimately effective radius can be brought into the effective width that is the 2RS in fact you know? then x is equal to half QR by KS T by 4 alpha and by this relationship you can work out now Q is no more the discharge of a one liter, one dripper, but it is the Q well and it is the discharge of the lateral unit length of the letter. In that unit length there could be four letter drippers, there could be five drippers, and that uh, the discharge of this Q well is equal to the discharge of all the drippers within the length of the one meter put together. Okay, then we will see the distribution of the pressure and the moisture and uh, in this particular figure in particular A that you are seeing is the distribution of pressure head and pressure head you can just see as you go towards the outer boundary the, the value is increasing or coming up to 102 but it's a very low at this uh, near the dripper 46 that means the saturation the, the moisture content is very high near the dripper and it keeps on decreasing as it moves towards the outer boundary of the wetted area and normally the, the lines joining the equal pressure head will be the the lines of equal moisture content also if we uh, avoid or if we neglect the effect of the stasis and that's what in the second figure that B that you are seeing is the, the streamlines that is the direction of movement of flow. Now a very specific question and uh, situation mm, we have assumed in all the discussions earlier that our including our uh, Richard's equation and its solution that soil is homogeneous but in normal situation in the natural situation not necessarily all the time you will get the hetero homogeneous soil it will be heterogeneous and in case of a heterogeneous soil uh, there could be two situations that uh, a heavier soil is overlaid by a lighter soil or a lighter soil is overlaid by a heavier soil. Now, how the, the flow will behave in both the conditions? If we'll assume, if we assume that a lighter soil is above and a below is the heavier soil, the water movement within the lighter soil is vertically faster in lighter soil. It will move up to the transient point up to the point where the the heavier soil comes and then the rate of entry of water into the heavier soil will not be as much it is much lesser then flow will start moving towards the sides over the uh, heavier soil and then after the pressure loss then it will start only entering into the heavier soil now if you consider the, the opposite situation the heavier soil is over or above and below is the, is the lighter soil then water is moving very slowly into the heavier soil and when it comes to the uh, the lighter soil the transition point the the, the pressure of the water is such uh, that it is held high tightly and then Again, the similar phenomenon will happen over the lighter soil. It moves sideways first, and then the, when the pressure is low, then it will start entering into the lighter soil. So these both the situation, the the flow pattern will almost remain the same. If we see that uh, we are applying the water at one particular point uh, through the emitter, and then we are shutting it off. Let's say it could be one hour, two hours, three hours irrigation. 
But what happens after the irrigation is stopped? The, the moisture content does not remain static. It starts redistribution by itself under the forces of the capillary and gravity on the soil. So it gets starts distribution. And again, next time when you will apply water, it again comes back to the same situation. So it will keep on building. And then after the dripper is shut off, the system is shut off, it will start releasing and redistribution. So it becomes a cyclic pattern of uh, higher discharge to lower discharge, keeps on decreasing with time, and then again coming up to a higher, a higher moisture content, and then going to the lower moisture content. So this cyclic pattern will be observed at all points within the soil uh, under all different types of Till now, we have discussed the movement of water alone within the soil under micro irrigation system. But each micro irrigation has a special advantage of applying fertilizers or any water soluble chemicals along with irrigation water very efficiently into the entire farm. So, we have seen how the water is moving. And if we apply fertilizers and uh, dissolve with the water, uh, obviously it looks that they will also get distributed as per the distribution of water. But that is partly correct because uh, when it comes to chemicals or fertilizers, his movement is not only as per the movement of the water, but they react with the soil particles and you know the major nutrients are NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. Nitrogen is more mobile. It moves with the water. And as per the distribution of water, the nitrogen normally gets distributed accordingly. But when it comes to phosphorus and potash, the these they react to the soil particles within the soil and they get stuck particularly the the potash and the, the potash and phosphorus they do not move along with the water front or along with the water so uh, the consequence we'll discuss in uh, how what you are seeing in this uh, slide and these are different applications of fertilizers i think we'll, they will be covered under different topics so i'll not take up here now, what I uh, was telling in the last slide that P is the chemical or the compound which gets affected, gets stuck with the clay particles or maximum. The potassium, the, the phosphorus, and the sorry, phosphorus is the one which gets stuck more strongly, and whereas the potash. It is held up with the soil, but slightly more mobile than potash. But you can see the nitrogen, nitrogen in the form of ammonia or nitrate. Uh, it is more mobile, or the most mobile among the three. But the wetting pattern, the pattern of distribution will remain same as per the pattern of the, uh, the water distribution because they are being carried by water. But you can just see that. A uh, very large area is that there is only nitrogen and the outer periphery. Then uh, in between is uh, uh, potash and then the very close to the dripper or the water application point is the phosphorus attached. Now these are the, the distributions observed. Uh, if, if let's say we have the, let me show that if the Dripper is placed here, then you can see the distribution of different N, P, and K. Uh, it's not very clear in this particular photograph. Maybe you'll see the next. Uh, I think we'll uh, find much better figures, much better slides later. 
these are all different kinds of uh, arrangements of water what we have discussed most of them only thing that we have not covered is subsurface placement of them now normally the main and sub main are placed subsurface placed buried and the laterals are above kept above the ground but when the laterals are also kept buried in the soil then the system is called a subsurface irrigation system like this now it is difficult to model subsurface irrigation and but it has a, a lot more advantages uh, in terms of water distribution natural distribution and particularly safety and interference with the agricultural tools and equipments that we do during the crop operation now if we let's say this is an experiment i am going to i'm showing you that 5 cm below the soil 10 cm below the soil 20 and 30 cm below the soil if you keep if you keep the 30 cm below the soil you just see hardly see any moisture coming up and this is the 20 cm you will see some of the water coming but you can see a lot of water <laughs> uh, here is visible it could be a point source also that it can serve as a point source also if you try to see the moisture distribution in terms of subsurface it is a surface point and if you put the dripper here and that is the distribution but if the dripper is at this depth then you can see this is shape of the wetted area here but if you put it further down at this depth then you can see very very small moisture content very low moisture content at the surface now normally we don't go deeper than 30 cm for placing a lateral and uh, because then the losses particularly to uh, through depopulation will increase and you will have uh, they will not the water will not be available for the plants so we don't go much deeper than this again show the, the difference between the moisture patterns uh, particularly uh, the root zone under initial condition and during development stage middle stage and maturity stage of the crop that we would like to have and they can be adjusted by adjusting the duration uh, surface and subsurface benefits and uh, merits and demerits you all can refer to the very standard book and you will just see that uh, here this also again shows you the distribution of soil moisture if the dripper is here then you can see the the distribution of uh, that kind the very important precaution that needs to be taken in subsurface irrigation is that adjust the operating pressure accordingly otherwise if the operating pressure is more than the result will be in such type of cavities that you are seeing in this particular figure this particular figure that uh, these cavities will form and after these cavities are formed the normally the drip tape when the drip tape is laid subsurface uh, its opening is kept upwards and if the cavity is formed and when the cavity falls and the, the smaller particles start uh, moving up and down within this flow, they tend to settle within the emitter and they start choking the emitter. So that has to be taken care of uh, while at the time of the operating pressure adjusting, adjusted during the operation time of the system. Here again, the same uh, subsurface distribution of uh, uh, water and nutrients, of course, there will be a function as we have shown. If the dripper, if the lateral is here, dripper is here, then the potash available will be very close to this particular point, and then phosphorus will go up to this point. Uh, sorry, I'm saying the reverse. The phosphorus will be very stuck in the very thing and potash will be going up to this and then nitrogen will be going up to the entire wetted zone and it depends on which particular crop you go now for example potato here is very simple application how do we do there on the plain surface you put a, a drip lateral 
it will then put the tubers, C tubers, and then cover it. So it becomes a subsurface. Now uh, the tubers are placed on the, on the places where the tubers are. So they get the water and they are covered. This becomes a subsurface and potato yields, very high potato yields were realized here. Uh, I can just give you an idea. The normal average uh, yield of potato in this country is around 19, 20 tons uh, per hectare. Whereas we have realized up to 50 tons per hectare under subsurface deprecation at Indian Agriculture Research Institute. Same experiment. Same. Now, the last thing that I would like to cover under this particular lecture is how do we simulate and model the distribution of nutrients and water? Because not everywhere or every field you can start doing the experiment and then by experimentation you arrive particular decision that what drippers you are going to use and then what discharge should be and what duration of operation should be to match the wetting pattern. So for that, a uh, very simple and very common model is hydrostudy and in hydrostudy uh, very simple information is required now here you can just see this particular case uh, this is simulated like this assuming the dripper here then certain area is considered saturation that you can decide how much is this and then this is the total approach and this boundary is considered impervious and similarly it is simulated and then all is a menu driven uh, model address 2d and you can use it for working out the shape of the wetted area uh, under a single point source and then here you can just see these are some of the uh, comparisons of observed and simulated waterfront advances with time using the model Hydra 2D. Same thing, same thing, same thing. This is all uh, what I wish to cover within this particular lecture. If you have any questions or queries, keep them on your notebook, record them for later reference and maybe through some webinar or some interaction, personal interaction, we'll be able to take up those questions and discuss further. Thank you.